Oh, jeez. <laughs> I haven't told that one in a while. One day, you know, we're all here working, and, and all of a sudden you start hearing uh, you know, fire engines and the sirens come in, and pretty soon there's firemen running onto the site. We started running after them, trying to figure out what was going on, and finally grabbed the chief, and he grabs me, and I go, what's going on? He goes, we got a call. The buildings are falling down. And we just stopped, and you're like, no, 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 they're supposed to be like that. So we had to walk all the firemen through uh, the design of the building. We showed them the drawings, we showed them the pictures, and uh, we all got a, good, a pretty good kick out of it. And uh, sure enough, he walked away, he said, okay, I got it. We do a lot of buildings that a lot of people look at and say, can you do that? The reality is it takes months of planning. We have five, six hundred guys on site every day, and what we're doing is crazy. We're building two towers at the same time, and then we're connecting them with a bridge in midair. We're set up as a company to be able to execute on a project like this. This truss looks nice. This one looks sick. If a group of people could envision and design a project like this, then we have to build it, because we can. How is, is such a universal question. How did they build that? It's so huge. And the answer is almost always they broke it into smaller pieces, and then they, they zoomed in when they needed to on the, on the minutia. I spent a year in a bridge painting company. My first thought was how we would access the bolt holes and the, the welds that we needed to, to make. And I immediately thought of the rope bridges that we use in bridge painting. The first step in actually building the bridge was to throw a piece of string from one building to the other. And from that, we pulled a uh, rope across. And from the rope, we pulled a cable. And from the cable, we pulled eight cables. And from that, we put the decking. And from the decking, we're able to access the bridge. And then from the bridge trusses, we're able to put decking down and pour concrete. And then from the concrete, it, it builds from there. At some point, we will uh, wrap the structure in glass. And it will all have come from that piece of string, oddly enough, because you, you have to start somewhere. The complicated part is all in the design. The methods of it, it's tricky to figure out, but, but ultimately, you've got guys that do this every day. You try to come up with a method that is simple, and this level of detail-oriented, step-by-step uh, approach allows it to be calm on the day that you do it. There's obviously excitement that day, but there's not nervousness, and there's a big difference. You're not nervous because you know what you're doing and you've been there. The first piece was 34,000 pounds, and the next piece was up close to 30. That's a big chunk of steel. The logistics of getting it into place are making sure that those two points where it connects are precise enough that there's basically a male and female section on both ends, and when those mate together, that there's harmony and that everything is on the right line. Speaking from the guys that are out here building it and some of the guys that are, are like steel and concrete a little bit more than uh, some of the amenity finishes, what we like about it is that it functions. It transfers our electric from one building to another. It transfers our condenser water from one building to another. And it allows our bu buildings to communicate to each other and it makes it a project rather than two towers that happen to have a footpath between the two. This is a big job. It's its single most defining character. It's beautiful, we know. It's unique, we know. But it is big. Close to a million square feet. It's one of the largest in New York City. It's one of the largest any of us will work on in our careers. And we face that challenge every day.